Hello, Tasty to everybody. Yesterday I spoke at the University of Colorado um, on uh, this issue, but then the audio was not clear, so many people requested that I uh, make a statement on this, especially uh, on the issue of His Holiness Dalai Lama, you know, um, playfully kissing a boy and uh, saying something politically incorrect. Um, you know, those who know His Holiness the Dalai Lama, like Tibetans and Buddhists and uh, people who have visited him and met him, will not see any story whatsoever in the story which is being shared and reported by major news media around the world. Number one, the incident happened in February 28. Why the news is going viral now after five weeks, that itself is a question. Number two, if you have met His Holiness Dalai Lama, having worked with him for 10 years, I've been with him in many public events. He is one playful person. For example, if there is an Indian secure person with a beard, he will pull his beard. If you have a moustache, he will play with your moustache. Sometimes, you know, he, he will pull his moustache down, you know. I'm sure that person has spent many minutes, you know, keeping it up. He plays his, uh, pulls it down. And if you have a big head, he'll point your head and say, big head, big head, you know. So if you have a big nose, he was a big nose, big nose. And he goes close and gives the New Zealand Maori greeting, you know, of touching each other's nose. So he's like that, all the time playing. And if you are bald, that's it. He'll rub your head and give you one spank. It is sometimes quite hard. My security uh, colleague used to get quite a few spank uh, on his head because, you know, he, he was bald. Now, imagine His Holiness Dalai going to the White House, meeting the President of America. This can't be, you know, I mean, as serious and formal meeting as possible. He meets President Barack Obama. What does he do? He solemnly says to Obama, oh, you have big ear. He starts playing with his ear. And what does Obama say? Oh, you notice, you know. So in that very serious, highest level of meeting, he solemnly plays with people. Another story. He solemnly was, was giving a lecture at Harvard University, Sanders Theater, and he had to go through this basement uh, tunnel and where there was also an office. So we had cleared the tunnel. So as his all was coming out, one lady from the office came out with the files and, you know, she was busy uh, moving forward. His all ran and gave one slap, you know, from the back to the lady. She turned around and looking, uh, thinking, who the hell hit me, you know? And his solace looked at her, smiled, and she also smiled. They both laughed and they hugged. They started walking. What did his solace tell this lady? He said, fat, fat, fat. Because this lady was, you know, on, you know, heavier sight. She laughed, he laughed, they hugged. They, uh, you know, walked towards the stairs and he said goodbye to her and she said goodbye to him. And she shared the story that his solace hit her and she, you know, he called her fat. Why the lady was not offended? because his solemnness is sincere. He has no ill intention. He was very pure in his motivation. For example, myself, I got elected in 2011. In front of thousands of people, I think 50,000 people, his solemnness was giving a speech. At the end, he introduced me. He said, oh, now we have a new leader. You know, he's from Harvard and modern educated and all that. I was getting, you know, quite proud. Then he said, his Tibetan is, you know, of a school standard. Can you imagine I'm supposed to be a Tibetan leader, you know, supposed to have oratory skills and Tibetan language. And then he solemnly just said, you know, the standard of Tibetan is of a school kid. Everybody laughed, you know. I was embarrassed, right? But what did I do? Did I feel anything bad towards his holiness? No. Why? Because he's pure. He's sincere. He has no ill intention at all. I laughed with him. I was embarrassed. I wish he would be a little more politically correct with me in front of these people. But no, that's his solemnness for us, right? So people should understand that if you have watched the video with the boy, Tibetans will say that boy is so lucky. He got a hug from his solemnness and he got, also got a kiss, right? But then from Western or others' perspective, I can understand it was politically incorrect. Then His Holiness Office issued a statement, said sorry, 
to the boy and the family, anyone who was offended. Now that's the end of the story. We should move forward, right? But then, you know, this um, rapper, musician, you know, what Cardi B and saying, oh, the people in power abuse their power. We should protect our children. And she shares the story about his solemnness and the boy. I mean, come on, give, you know, give a break. Let me share with you a story that no one knows this. Maybe barely 10 people know about this. During COVID, right, America was number one in infection and death. India was number two. That's where His Holiness Dalai Lama lived, right? So I was going to Washington, D.C., and his person, physician, Dr. Siddhala, called me and said, hey, you know, when you go to uh, D.C., America is about to launch, you know, Pfizer vaccine. If you could get some vaccine for His Holiness, because His Holiness is 85 now, entering 86 years old at that time. All the people who died, majority of them were elders. And His Holiness Dalai Lama was vulnerable given his age. Right? So I came to Washington, D.C. This is in November of 2020, right? And I met uh, people at the White House, the Deputy National Security Advisors and others, and I made a request. And I said, you know, His Holiness is very, you know, he's given his age. We need to vaccinate him and protect from COVID. And White House agreed. And then message was conveyed to the U.S. Embassy in Delhi. They also agreed, right? And then the vaccine was supposed to be taken to Dharamsala. Now the person, physician of His Holiness and the person secretary approached His Holiness. You know what His Holiness said? He said, oh, please thank the government of America, but I don't want Pfizer vaccine. Because 1.4 billion people in India, they don't have vaccine. And I see people here, ordinary people, they are not getting vaccine also, right? I will wait till they get vaccinated, then only I'll get vaccinated. So, you know, he refused a vaccine from America. That's his holiness, Dalai Lama, right? Now, we waited for a few months, right? And then, finally, the vaccine was introduced in India and AstraZeneca, which is 67% effective. And then again, the personal physician called me and uh, asked me whether the government of India could facilitate that he be vaccinated at his residence. And I made the request to the health secretary in Delhi, health minister of Himachal and health secretary. And they all agreed. Right? And the CMO or the chief medical officer of Dharamsala was informed. And then, you know, the next day, the personal physician went to his holiness and said, you know, your holiness, uh, the COVID vaccine will be given to you at your residence, right? What did His Holiness say? His Holiness said, why should I get a special treatment? I should go down to the hospital where all the people get their vac vaccine. So he went to the local hospital, like ordinary Tibetans and Indians, and got vaccinated, right? So that's His Holiness. He never use his personal popularity in influence far less than that even vaccine was offered by america even when he was offered to get vaccinated at his residence he said no i will go down to the local hospital so tibetans know about it right buddhists know about it all the people around his holiness know about it that he is sincere he is for us the Buddha of compassion, right? So I hope people around the world will understand through the stories because of my personal experience, right? And put it in proper context whenever you talk about His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Lastly, major media have covered these stories. Story and then and it's time to move on. But also, you are showing concern about children, which is fair. What about one million Tibetan children who are forcibly removed from their homes in nomadic families, farming families in Tibet, and they are forced to study in boarding school in urban areas where they are taught in Chinese language. Everything Chinese is taught, they are made into Chinese. Even the UN human rights experts have reported on this. But all these major media who covered this incident or His Holiness Dalai Lama did not report about this one million Tibetan children. I hope you, know, you all will report about serious and real issues in Tibet. So with that, 
I want to say thank you to everybody for listening. I hope you know you got a proper context based on my personal experience about His Holiness Dalai Lama. We love him. We are devoted to him because he is a great leader. He is the great 14th Dalai Lama of Tibet. Thank you. I have a question. Can I hug you? It was amazing meeting His Holiness and I think it's a really great experience meeting somebody with such high positive energy. It's a really nice feeling meeting him and you get a lot of that positive energy. It's not just like that, but once you get the positive energy, I think you're happier and it's a better thing and you smile a lot more. It was a really good experience overall. I'm Dr. Payal Kanodia, trustee M3M Foundation. We've been working in Dharamshala on this uh, skill center which we started last year. And since then, we were looking at seeking blessings from His Holiness. And, you know, today we got this opportunity and especially when my family was there with me and the, all the students who graduated from I Am Power Academy of Skills were also present. We are totally, totally blessed to have got these blessings from His Holiness. He came, addressed us in person, taught about peace that wo the world needs and how everyone needs to feel together like brother and sister. And I, I absolutely cannot, you know, express how I feel getting blessed.